This video is about clinical pathways. This very powerful tool that help the medical team learn from their own practice and be able to improve the care provided. For more videos, visit my Facebook page, Healthcare Quality. These definitions of policies and procedures, clinical guidelines, and the clinical pathways are to clarify differences between these terms. For a policy, it's a simple statement representing the official stand of the organization regarding a specific issue. For example, our hospital had adopted a policy of defining, protecting, and promoting patients and the customer rights. Second example, our hospital encouraging customers to express their comments, suggestions, and complaints. The procedures is a process with owner. It represents the implementation steps that are carried out to achieve the policy. Clinical guidelines, also called clinical protocols or medical guidelines or clinical practice guidelines, it's a document with the aim of guiding decisions and criteria in specific areas of healthcare as defined by authoritative examination of current evidence, evidence-based medicine. Examples of clinical guidelines are the recommendations of the case management of diarrhea in children under the age of five years. The practitioner is guided through all steps of consultation, such as questions to ask, physical signs to look for, lab exams to prescribe, assessment of the situation, and the treatment to prescribe. Clinical pathways, on the other hand, are an agreed upon treatment regimen that includes all elements of care. They are multidisciplinary plans of best clinical practice for specific groups of patients with a particular diagnosis that aids the coordination and delivery of high quality care. The path describes what interventions an average patient might require, but allows the physician to change, delete, or add interventions to meet each patient's needs. In this sense, a clinical path serves as a patient management guide, but it is not a standard of care. A clinical path details the involvement of all groups, physicians, nurses, and other staff, and summarizes their activities using a day-by-day at-a-glance format. It's important to remember that clinical paths do not replace an individual caregiver's judgment about a unique situation. What is the value of a clinical pathway? It identifies the important functions, care processes, and the needed services connected with a particular diagnosis, for example, diabetes, or procedure, for example, total joint replacement, or condition, for, exam for example, ventilator dependent, for each expected day of care in the hospital or for each stated objective. It describes patient, material, 
and information flow for given disease or condition. Establish a clear mechanism focused on the patient and not a department service to manage the patient through the system. It links expected care based on incorporation of appropriate practice guidelines and standards of care with the nursing or interdisciplinary care plans. This allowed us to track significant variations from the path, case by case, and over time, to improve care by modifying the path, improving associated processes of care, establishing better or best practices. It vertically integrates care at all levels from primary care through the acute inpatient period to post-discharge care and the maintenance of function, and also communicate care expectations to patients and families and involve them actively and concretely in the care. How to develop a clinical pathway? The following issues must be addressed. The focus diagnosis, procedure, and or conditions must be identified based on patient groups may be selected on the basis of high volume, high cost, high risk, or problem prone data. And those diagnosed procedure and condition that have wide variability in processes and obviously need a new process designed to bring the clinical system under control. The clinical path must be developed by a team consisting at least of all those who provide direct care to the identified patient group. Identifying the categories of care to be included as applicable, for example, consults, lab diagnostic evaluation, radiology diagnostic evaluation, other diagnostic evaluation, treatments, nursing care, medications, nutrition, activity, teaching, discharge transition plan, and psychosocial. Identify the level and the number of days of care or visits to be included. Outlining anticipated care requirements and outcomes for each level day of care objective and category using existing data or medical record review. Testing the accuracy of the clinical path while care is being rendered, redesigning as necessary to reduce potential for necessary variations, identifying, documenting, and tracking variances over time, looking for better practice and continuing redesign as necessary, or introducing other process improvements to further reduce variation. This is an example of a partial clinical pathway of uncomplicated myocardial infarction. With description of the problems and activities in the left column, and from left to right, each column represents what we will do in each consecutive day. Other examples. This is another example for pneumonia patients for four days length of stay. The next example 
is a clinical path for uncomplicated coronary artery bypass grafting. Each vertical column indicates one day of treatment. Each horizontal column indicates a type of treatment, assessment and evaluation tests, consults, treatments, medications, activities, and diet. For each day and each type of treatment, in other words, in each cell of the path, specific actions are listed and there is a space to check whether the action is performed or not. The third example is a clinical path for treating simple acute myocardial infarction. It shows a different approach to clinical care maps. These forms also divide patient care for an identified diagnosis or procedure by treatment day and type of patient care activity. In addition, the care map lists the expected outcome on each day for a range of patient problems and the nursing diagnosis. Thus, the care map becomes a tool for measuring outcomes at various stages of treatment. Now we will talk in detail about clinical path variants. Clinical pathways have built-in monitoring systems. If a patient doesn't achieve an expected outcome, a variance occurs. Variances can be positive. For example, if a patient progresses ahead of the pathway and is discharged home earlier than expected or negative if the patient does not progress as planned this may occur if the interventions are not completed or the patient fail to meet the expected outcomes variances are categorized as patient system or clinician caused depending on the source of the variation. In the case of a post-operative patient who should have been scheduled to receive antibiotics according to the clinical pathway, the variance may be generated from any of these three sources. The patient may not tolerate the medication. The system may not provide the antibiotic in a timely manner, or the clinician may forgot to order a medication. The purpose of identifying variances is to evaluate what works and what need refinement. Deviations from the prescribed clinical pathway are recorded on the variance record that provides information for analysis. This is an example of variance report. Variance documentation and analysis consists of three parts. The identification of the variance, 
The reason for the variance usually coded by accusative or source category and an action plan to address the variance and return the patient to the clinical pathway timeline. The next form is also used to document variations from the uncomplicated coronary artery bypass grafting path. This information can be used to determine whether the path needs to be modified, whether the circumstances of a specific case require departure from the path, or whether a variation requires further evaluation. Each variance and subsequent corrective action is evaluated for effectiveness by the clinicians. It's when the variances are accumulated over time that trends affecting patient outcomes can be identified. In addition to identifying and correcting negative variances, it's also important to evaluate positive variances, such as achieving outcomes earlier than anticipated, because they may provide clues to more cost-effective care. This clinical pathway for diabetic ketoacidosis was one of the most successful clinical pathways we developed. Thank you.